Cost reports are a vital tool in construction used by quantity surveyors to report on expenditure and assess the financial performance of a construction project. In this video, we're going to explore them in more detail to ensure you're making the most out of these reports. Before we begin, if you enjoy these videos, please be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerted when we upload new videos. Cost reports are reports generated by a company's accounting software. To name a few, your company may use Causeway, SAP, Oracle, or Sage. Sometimes, compromising thousands of Excel lines, these reports return a detailed breakdown of all the costs on a project. They can be used to form application for payments or categorizing into a necessary format for weekly or monthly financial reporting. In this video, we're going to look into an example cost report, understand what information each column provides, and talk about how this information can be combined with pivot tables to categorize costs for examination, scrutinizing, and reporting. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to break this into sections. The order and names of these columns will vary depending on your company's format. However, they all offer similar information. The first column is project reference. This is used to differentiate costs between projects. Salaries of personnel and invoices from suppliers will be allocated to the relevant project code and subsequently appear on the cost report for the relevant project. Sometimes cost is booked to the wrong project and a journal is carried out to correct this error. Next up we have cost component. This column differentiates costs between labor, plant, materials, subcontract and charges. This column comes in useful when reporting the financials of a project. Understanding what is being spent in these key areas compared to what was budgeted for is vital to understand if a project is on track financially and if there are any issues that need to be addressed. Cost date. This is usually the date when the cost appears on the ledger. However, it may also be directly related to when the work took place. For example, some companies require employees to carry out electronic timesheets and allocate how many hours worked on projects on certain days. In this instance, you may find the cost date reflecting the actual day that personnel carried out the work under a specific project. This isn't always the case, and often cost is grouped together into a package of cost like salary payments at the end of the month. However, this column will give you an idea as to what period the cost relates to. For example, if you have a subcontractor who's on 28 day payment terms, then the ledger item would relate to works carried out in the prior month. Description. This column gives further detail on what the cost relates to. For example, the name of the associated personnel or the group which it relates to, i.e. July staff salary. If it's a material, it will detail information about the specific material, for example, cladding or timber beams. If it's for subcontractor costs, it will detail the supplier's name. Amount. This is the most vital column. It returns the cost relating to that specific ledger item and is used to identify the actual spend. Fee. This is normally displayed if you are working on a cost contract. The fee agreed with the client is displayed here and can be added to the amount column in order to calculate the revenue on a project. Sometimes you may have multiple fees on the same project. For example, the fee for subcontract cost may be different to the fee for direct cost. All the information discussed in this video can be combined with pivot tables for categorization, examination, scrutinizing, and reporting. In the description, we've left a link to a video where we talk about how to create pivot tables from a detailed cost report on Excel. Matrone, a commercial hub to your business.